there's this scarcity mentality around money and these different things, and people are afraid to charge for their services. They're afraid to step into the business aspect of their art, their passion, their creativity. So here we are again, another episode of the Freedom Culture Podcast. I'm here at Envision Festival with the beautiful Jared Decker and John Early. Buenos dias. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, John. My name is Julian. I can't wait for this conversation. John, you just wrote a book. I did, yes. T tell us the title and the subtitles. Tales of the Modern Nomad, Monks, Mushrooms, and Other Misadventures. It is definitely the... Uh, uh, you know, you learn so much from the misadventures when you travel, and that's just part of it. And it's based on 10 years of backpacking and traveling around the world. Um, I'm year, on year 13 now, and now of uh, you know, once you go through the the travel side of of things, you're you're no longer looking for the landmarks; you're looking for the lifestyle. Mm. And so now I've I've stumbled into an amazing project called Momentum Collective. Um, we have a camp here as well at Envision. And, uh, and, collective. and the more you travel, the more it's, it's about the people and not, not about the places anymore. And that's exactly what we've been trying to create is conscious community and, and that kind of thing that goes with that to really embody and, and find the people that inspire us and continue with that. So that's a bit of a background on both the book and uh, as well um, with Momentum Collective. Really cool. John, I love the subtitle. Monks, <laughs> Mushrooms, and other... Misadventures. Misadventures. So, can you can you tell us a little bit more about the power of accepting reality as it is? <laughs> because often we have certain dreams and visions. We're like, yes. oh, I'm gonna go to this place and it's gonna be amazing, and then something else happens that actually is the lesson. Yes, um, yes. The book is based on misadventures, and just like traveling, you know. Well, well, first of all, no one wants to read a book about a great day on the beach, right? Mm -hmm. It's always like if you come back from a year of travels, they're like, tell me the craziest thing. I don't want to know about that amazing margarita you had in the sunshine. Tell me about when things go wrong and then what you can learn from that. And that's normally where the lessons are. The power of travel is getting comfortable being uncomfortable, um, not speaking the language in a total different culture or when things go wrong, and things will go wrong if you're really traveling or, or doing the proper backpacking thing. And how do you roll with that? And and that is the power of the people that you meet when you travel and the power of travelers, how you bond so quickly together, is that you can see how people react um, in these extreme situations, right? And it's the same thing with relationships when you travel too. Going through misadventures um, with, a, with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or just a, someone that you meet, 24 hours with that person you'll know way more than 24 days uh, with the person, right? So you can have these connections that go so much deeper when you're dealing with when things go wrong and how people react to that, how comfortable they can be um, dealing with things um, that are uncomfortable. So in your experience with that, do people, does humanity step up or is it disappointing? Well, that's part of travel. You have to learn to trust a whole lot in the places that you're in. Uh, and trust yourself to know how to ask and find the answers. Some people are just like, if no one's telling me what to do, I'm in this all-inclusive and they don't hurdle me into this <laughs> tour boat or whatever, like, I don't know what to do. No, like, you have to get out there and, and try and speak with the locals or try and even if you don't speak the language, how can you communicate these simple things? <laughs> And all of a sudden, the littlest conversation, getting that across with someone who neither of you speak the same language, it's so powerful and beautiful when you can like have that connection of like, yes, okay, I, I, yes. I, I was looking for hot sauce and this is hot sauce. This is amazing. <laughs> it worked out. You, you understand me. We understand. There's a connection. So <laughs> Those little wins when you travel can be so powerful. The simple things. Yeah. 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 I'm really curious about more misadventures, but also the, the monk part of the subtitle. Like, <laughs> so for you, when, when did like, living like a monk or taking the wisdom of the monks into your daily life, like right. yoga or meditation or stillness, when did that really like, arrive in your reality? That was um, partway through the travel. So the book is based on 10 years of traveling. And then after a while, you're kind of like, okay, you know, especially when you're in your young 20s and you're doing the backpacking thing, you're doing the circuit of Southeast Asia, you've done enough full moon parties, you're like, there's got to be something more. <laughs> Yeah. If this is the dream, well, I'm missing something because this doesn't feel fulfilling anymore, mm. the partying and all that. So then you can start tapping into the other the cultures and the, the ways that people, you know, um, and I was very fortunate to spend a lot of time 
um, with some of the different monasteries and the monks and the Buddhist temples in Thailand and around the world. And you can drop into that and how, just being open to that and seeing what you can learn from that. And, uh, and I was also looking for a subtitle for the book that would kind of capture the spirituality side, monks, the psychedelic side, mushrooms, that's a little nice, you know, yeah. warning to people, a PG <laughs> warning without putting reader discretion advised on the thing, and the focus on the misadventures. Um, and, and it's also a book about, you know, when you're growing up traveling, making these mistakes and learning from them. And, and part of that, too, is some of the mistakes of, you know, um, experiment. There's a lot of experimentation that happens when you're young and traveling. Totally. And especially with global psychedelics or these different things. And uh, if... if you know, an example would be um, when I was in Mexico, um, taking peyote from a shaman and eating it when without the intention that it was needed. Mm. And these things where you're like, okay, and the message comes through, the spirit comes through, is like, hey, you weren't, you weren't ready for this here. You yeah. need to put some intention and thought into this because this is a powerful thing. And so kind of getting into that world of like having that respect and coming back to the intention of why are you traveling? Why are you ingesting these certain things? And why, why are you putting yourself out there uh, are you to, and, and getting more out of it than just the party on a beach in some hot tropical climate in the winter? Yeah. <laughs> so, so why are you? Why am I? Uh, well, <laughs> nothing was ever planned, right? You don't intend to plan and backpack the world for 13 years or come into these different um, companies and collectives. Um, but when you find that flow and it feels right, you, you got to follow that excitement. you got to follow what feels good. And this has been feeling good. And now stepping into things with Momentum Collective and being able to create that conscious travel, create these pockets of community and conscious um, uh, spiritual, uh, you know, uh, spiritual silliness as well, not taking things too seriously. Mm. It's really nice to really feel like you're making that impact you're wanting to be in the world of having, holding a space for people to be vulnerable, um, be creative. And I think vulnerability and creativity is so powerful together, especially when you're traveling, of being open to these new experiences and being vulnerable to not knowing and, and being open to other people's interpretations of uh, what a community is. What uh, what what living is, and, and what we could take for granted in these <laughs> lives, we, yeah. or places where we come from. So really powerful. I love that you're dropping some insights around like not knowing, <laughs> leaning <laughs> into not knowing, and then also like, well, let's be real. Failure is one of the biggest teachers on this planet for us. Like, so there's powerful. no single human being that didn't learn walking it's so through failure. Mm. So. Now that this is so clear to you, can you elaborate a little bit on how the leaning in process right. really looks and feels like? Because you know that when you lean in, when you have an intention, when you are connecting, when you're really present with people, hmm. the magic and the serendipity starts to line up. Yeah. So how does it look in, in your life? Yeah, I like that leaning in because leaning in doesn't necessarily say jumping head first into something and that, and that can be good. And sometimes you have to have more of that lean where it's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this out. I can always lean back again, but I'm going to lean into this and feel how that feels and not, you know, there's power in going just straight into something where it's something, a new experience, whatever, but being, having that control of knowing when to lean further or to kind of like back up a little bit, I think is really powerful and important. And that's the same thing with any, um, uh, any situation or travel, you're like, hey, I, I can, you know, your backup plan, being able to get, get back out, but trusting yourself um, to go into that. And I, and I feel the thing that comes back to for trusting those experiences, um, I mean, for me, a lot of this was traveling on my own. So you're by yourself a lot. You're really independent. You gain that independence. And you lean in because you can lean in to trust other people. And there's other backpackers and people that you meet. And you're leaning in with these, okay, I trust you. I like this. Let's, let's team up. Let's go out for dinner. Or let's go. You need to find these people to make things cheaper, to afford it, or to kind of like just create that experience where you can share something. And sometimes you're like, okay, uh, you guys are great. That was a good couple of days. I'm going to lean back and take my own space. Um, and as I was traveling, I could realize that, hey, I could, you know, I could really be whoever I want to be, right? And, you know, I look like an Aussie surfer. Uh, sometimes you're like, oh, you're from California. You're sur and sometimes you put on a bit of an act that the circus part comes out and you can be whoever you want to be. I hear you, yeah. But the longer I travel, the more I realize that you can be who you ever want to be or you can be yourself. Mm. And after long enough time, those two things come together and it's the same answer that comes through it. And you have to really trust yourself to lean into yourself, lean into your own vulnerability in these situations and trust that. And, and, and that's something that you, 
gain the trust of the communities, the places that you're in. But when it comes back to it, it comes back to yourself, leaning into your own oomph, your own thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, times when you're like, I don't speak any of this language and I got to entertain myself because I'm in some random train traveling for a couple days. How can I make myself laugh? How can I make myself feel comfortable? How can I make myself, you know, inspire myself or to write something down? And so that's for me the power of traveling. And like you said, leaning into these situations is really leaning in to your own independence and trusting the confidence in your own self of how you can extract the best you can from a given experience. Yeah. I went on a bit of a tangent there. I'm not sure if that totally answered the question. So much. <laughs> so much. I feel like... Like, great. It was yeah. awesome. <laughs> right? Didn't he just, like, go right into, like, what freedom culture really is in, in so many ways? Actually, so what is freedom culture to you? Like, what does freedom that... Freedom culture. Yeah. What does it I love it. bring up? Yeah. Freedom culture is the ability to... Um, show up authentically to yourself for yourself first and that's again what it always comes back to for me is being vulnerable to your own self and showing up to yourself because otherwise if you're showing up for other people first then that's a facade that's not authentic or that's for social media that's for something else and yeah great instagram photos are cool and whatever but you want to be the freedom to be confident in your own skin in your own temple in your own space and the vulnerability there. It's, I've been really realizing the power of vulnerability, especially through creating these international communities with Momentum Collective, because that's where transcendence happens. That's yeah. where art, true art, is created, is being vulnerable. So having the freedom to really show up raw and kind of naked in a, in a way, because, you know, you, how can you create expression and create art if you're not vulnerable? You see yeah. a real singer, and people that are captivating, their eyes are closed, they're making weird faces, they are vulnerable to people watching them in their element. Yeah. You see a real piece of art that's raw and makes you feel something, that's what art moves you, makes you feel something because there's a vulnerability there for it to be created. And that for me is, comes back to the freedom of um, really being free to express that and, and, that, and be comfortable in that vulnerability and comfort getting comfortable being uncomfortable, coming back to that whole yeah. thing and, and learning from that. that. That for me is true freedom. I love that. This That's is kind of This is like a synchronistic trailer. moment for me because we just came out of a mastermind, a four-day mastermind in uh, Punta Mona. And one of my, we had to set intentions at the beginning and one of my intentions was um, to not be afraid to be seen, but in my, like, as my authentic self. So mm. I'm like a bookworm and I like my alone time and I don't need to be like, oh, all the time. And mm -hmm. I like just the, the quiet one-on-one -on -one moments yes. and not so much the big and so for me, that was it's been a huge thing this whole week. And now you're here and you're just like, yes. you're hammering it home. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God. OK, yeah, I get it. Well, that's <laughs> just it. Message. We're in a festival. We're around a lot of intense energy, especially with different things happening. People are in really heightened sensitivity to energy. And that's what we've been telling people at Momentum. That's a big thing that we embody. Mm -hmm. Being comfortable, taking your own space and doing yoga off to the side or meditating when you need it, having a nap, not feeling that pressure of like, mm -hmm. I have to go out and I have to party and I have to be blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, show up, show up for yourself first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, getting into your 30s, that's like the biggest thing was letting go of the FOMO of the 20s. Is, You're like, oh, third, man. Yeah, 30s <laughs> a magic number for that. <laughs> so how did um, the travels, the, the modern nomad turn into, like, how did that segue into momentum? What's mm -hmm. the... How Good question. Work for you? Um, well, that's the thing when you travel, you open yourself up to meeting a lot of amazing people, amazing, uh, opening yourself up to that connection. It's one of the best advice that my, uh, my mom actually gave me. I was wanting to travel right after high school. It's like, all right, did that school stuff for a while. <laughs> and my mom was like, no, um, I think you should go straight into, straight into, into university, get your education, which I, I got a BCon marketing and management, double major. So I've got a business background, but I was definitely the hippie in business school. Yeah. And, and she's like, now that you have your education, then you can jump into these opportunities when you have them. You have that education. You've got that background that you can fall back on. So when you are traveling and jumping into these experiences, if something happens, you can go, boom, I'm ready. Let's go for this. And I'm not going to lean into this. I might be jumping, you know, leaning in straight, yeah. you know, face first into the deep end of a, of a project. And I've been very fortunate to um, work with so many projects uh, along the travels. A lot of people ask, how have you been able to afford traveling for yeah, 13 that was, years? That was one of the questions that's like on my mind. Like, I know how all three of us got here, but, but I mean, you might be watching this and like, well, I'd love to live like John does, but I don't have the money to do so. Yeah. So how did you? 
being o- being open and vulnerable to those uh, those experiences when they come and jumping into it. And but for me, the big thing always comes back to adding value. How can you add value in a certain situation so people want you to be around? Boom. The more people want you to be around, the more it's like you'll eventually get paid for it or you'll get something free out of it or some travel or more opportunities open up and it's the simplest thing from from being a good guest that's so powerful and then people like oh come stay with us you're helping wash the dishes you're adding value you're singing some music and some songs perfect okay this is my other friend you go over here and all of a sudden you're staying for free going to these places getting the local experience and then all of a sudden job opportunities pop up and the, the job list that i've had over the last decade plus has been um, working on a cruise ship in the Caribbean, uh, working for Free and Easy Traveler, managing Central America for that, um, going across Canada for the Olympics, um, for the Olympic Torch Relay. Seven kilometers an hour is a very slow time to see Canada in the winter, but it's a powerful, <laughs> oh powerful, powerful <laughs> very <laughs> big, big <Cross>? country <laughs> right across. Um, wow. So these kinds of experiences that you meet other people, and I know that's what Freedom Culture is all about too, is making the connections and yeah. making making these people because it always comes back to whether you're traveling or deeming a digital nomad, it comes back to the people that you meet. Yeah. And now in the last few years, I've been fortunate to meet uh, Gabrielle Bonville and, and Therese Loughton, my two business partners with Momentum Collective, because that's when you start realizing like, hey, I've experienced a lot of communities and a lot of societies but I want to find the one that I can really resonate with. And for me, the one is that has that balance of spirituality, of consciousness, but play and not taking things too seriously. Mm -hmm. But uh, the whole thing with the creative container that we create is being able to, um, being both the teacher and the student in the same situation. Mm -hmm. So we're not just one guru telling you what to do. It's like, oh no, hey, um, cool. You've been here for a week. You feel comfortable. What can you teach us next week? We will open up the schedule. We've got a schedule Monday to Friday of different workshops and classes. And it ranges from acro yoga to aerial silks to clowning to uh, mm-hmm. how to, you know, social media hacks or, or like um, yeah. synchronized swimming if there's a pool where we're at. Whatever <laughs> passion people have, finding ways for people to be a leader in their own passion. And that's what's been really waking me up and livening me up the last while uh, mm-hmm. and traveling and doing that. I have another question. Because I know that there are so many really switched on people over the last probably two decades, last it's five happening. years. It's happening. More you people know? are tuning in. And, and Stephen Brooks up. and Norman Brooks, who founded Punta Mona, are the greatest example in, in our little microcosm here. You know, They started Punta Mona about 25 years ago. So I'm talking about the venue people, the people mm-hmm. that are drawn to steward the land, to host the global travelers, to be a home for those who are looking for the monk, the mushroom, and the misadventures. <laughs> so how do those people like um, really play a complement in the life that you're living as a, a total nomad? Yeah, it, it is the space because good places keep good people. And, mm-hmm. and it always comes back to the container for any community or any culture or any collective is how can you create this container um, so that the people can be a part of it and uplift themselves. And that's been a big thing, probably one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in the last year is knowing when to um, make it happen and knowing when to let it happen, mm-hmm. especially as a leader for a community and a leader in a group, knowing when to be like, all right, we need to switch this energy right now. We need to get people going, li- liven things up, whatever, or tone things down. You got to close things down. Like, quiet. All right. You know, or other times when it's just like, okay, we've done the things. Here's the space. Now, everyone, magic. Let it let it happen go and here. go with the flow. Um, so that's definitely been a big, big lesson of finding that balance, that comfortability of when to step in as a leader and when to just let um, things organically flow. So how does the momentum, Beautiful. how does that work? Is It's like a set community. Where is mm-hmm. it based? Um, we are a nomadic community oh, for you're sure. A nomadic uh, okay. Earlier uh, or in September, we'll be back um, for two months. Last, last year, we did three months in Indonesia, uh, okay. in Sumbawa, uh, our artist residency there. And then we were just in Guatemala over uh, November, December, January. Um, we came back to Nicaragua um, on a little spot called Circus Island that uh, we had in the, in the Isletas and then straight here to Envision. And we're going back to Nicaragua at a place called Aqua for a digital nomad residency. So all of the same yoga and circus flow and movement um, classes throughout the week, but also more focus on entrepreneurship and how to sustain our passions. Because we meet so many artists and so many people that want to come in and, and train and uplift their passion. But no, okay. Don't be afraid of yeah. business. In the art community, unfortunately, there's such a, uh, a, a, a 
there's this scarcity mentality around money and these different things, and people are afraid to charge for their services. They're afraid to step into the business aspect of their art, their passion, their creativity. And that's where we're trying to build that, meet that art and entrepreneurship, or even just for a business, you get them doing some movement classes and, and opening up through the body. All of a sudden, the ideas and the workflow will happen so much more when they actually sit down to get work done. So it's really that synergy between movement, art, and creativity that will fuel both the passion and both the, the business side of things. So. That's really cool. I love that. So then people just join for like when you're in certain places like, hey, I can be there at that time. I'm yeah. going to come. And Most people like stay for three to four weeks. It's more of an intensive thing. It's like a part festival, part summit, part retreat. Yeah. Yeah. So, But it, that's where the magic happens is when you're living with the people mm. and some of the different projects, it's interesting to see some of them are more catered to like an aqua. We're going to have, you know, some of our team doing the, the cooking and the cleaning and that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, in Guatemala, we were everyone was a part of doing the cooking and the cleaning too. We had different shifts and we had some people, um, you know, some more of our karma kitchen crew doing the, the base of it. But that's kind of where the magic happens, you know, is when you're really living together and, and creating something together and how to find ways for people to be of service to the community. Yeah. And and it's just like, you know, you can create this epic house party and have everything in the living room and all the music and everything. And in, in the end of the day, everyone's just sitting on the countertops in the kitchen and just hanging out because that's just sometimes where the magic happens. It's in the kitchen. That's my favorite place. Uh, yeah, so. the dance floor, like the kitchen <laughs> counter of the party where it's just like, that's my favorite. It's real. It's yeah. real. It's one of those convergence <laughs> spots, right? It's the kitchen it counters of our life. I, I, I love when we look at the difference between plans of how a party should go down mm. or the reality of how people actually naturally connect mm. yeah. but that's the thing of creating the, the space but then being able to go with the flow and letting it happen as it happens yeah. and and that's a powerful thing and when you see people cling on to their idea of what they thought it would be or should be or whatever and you're just like let it let it let it go let it go <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. so Really cool. John, thank you for making the time with us here. I have, I have a last question. Mm. And I want to know from you, because you wrote this fantastic book, <laughs> right? You wrote this, this book about misadventures. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the biggest misadventure that like, still makes you crack up in laughter? <laughs> um, you could say there's, there's a lot of non-PG material in the book. Um, I think we're a non-PG podcast. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're down to hear them. Yeah. Well, I've got I've got a few stories, and some some of them didn't make the book. Those are for the the round two. Um, Ooh, I guess can we get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do I begin with this? I think the one that you know it's always the juiciest part of the book is that when the the one where I was trying to give a little hint to my mom. I'm like, hey, mom. I'm writing this book and there's gonna be some stuff oh, in this book that, that that isn't yeah that's the thing when you put it all out there and you write a book yeah. with the word mushrooms in the title um i was trying to plant like put down some papers of like here you should read this first and i'll read it front to back when it's published i'm really excited i'm gonna be the first oh. to buy a copy I'm like thanks mom but you should really have a heads up on like some of the stuff i'm gonna write about so um, I've got a psychedelics chapter called Down the Rabbit Hole um, because that's where a lot of misadventures happen. If you're going to be dabbling with spirit medicine or plant medicine or psychedelics in general, um, there's going to be times when it's more of on the misadventure side than the uh, adventure mm -hmm. side. And um, I guess there's a few stories there, but the kind of the craziest one was uh, it's, a, it's, a <laughs> it's a story called Cocaine versus LSD. Aussies getting set on fire by strippers and the effects on the psyche. So I'll just I'll just leave it at that title for that. But uh, that was definitely where my mom was going. Oh, did you did you have to put that in the book? With the, <laughs> I told you to read it, mom. I, told I was trying you. to give you the heads up on that in advance. But yeah. that's one of those things of like, what are some of these outlandish and crazy situations that you might not be proud of? But what can you yeah. learn from this? What can yeah. you you know? Even if it is uh, getting set on fire by strippers while you're on acid, how can you? Uh, what can you extract from this situation? Getting set and then fire lighting a by writing, strippers <laughs> while you're on acid. Writing a book, that's been the powerful thing, and I, I urge everyone just write and journal and get it down because even if you don't publish yeah. it, the act of writing a book, of living a life, going, how can I take this experience and put it down into words that engages someone in a way that's fascinating or funny or can engage and, and gives a lesson. For making something worth 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 reading, worth writing. So yeah. that's been a big tagline for me: is live a life worth journaling. 
and mm. putting that, that down because it's so powerful, taking thoughts through the mind, through the body, to the hand, to a pen, onto paper, putting it into reality. And that's how you manifest things. That's how you reflect. And that's how you learn is, is, is that process of filtering. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. John, Thanks. you definitely made me want to read the book. <laughs> yeah, Tales I'm, of a Modern I'm Nomad. It. <laughs> it's already for sale, right? Check Where can out. people find it? Awesome. Yeah, perfect. Modernnomad.ca is the website. I've got a lot of other um, um, blogs up on there for sure. I've got some music videos I've filmed from around the world, some of my own music, all types of crazy shenanigans, more things about Momentum and what we've been doing as well, awesome. um, which you can find more information at MomentumCollective.com, uh, especially for oh. our... Uh, Aqua residency, our digital nomad residency from March 10th to April 10th in Nicaragua at the stunning location, Aqua Wellness Resort. So come cool. drop in with us. I guarantee you it'll be one of the most impactful few weeks of your life. Um, no no setting on fire by strippers no, okay. in this part. That's, yeah, they you, can read about it. You lear <laughs> you're learning from <laughs> Amazing Adventures. How yeah, and then the schedule's up on, um, up on there so that people can see in coming months what's there. Exactly, Cool, yes. we'll include links and everything I in the it. comments, so... Yeah, Excellent. Sure Thanks for making the time. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Well, I love yeah. this little setup yeah. in the jungle here. Let's know, let's keep cool, making right? some magic this time here and stop by our Momentum Collective camp as well. You oh. brought a big geodesic dome from Guatemala. Oh, yeah. Which is a story in itself of getting a thousand getting pounds of here. metal across four borders and all the things to set that up in the jungle. So thank you so much we'll for the time here, guys. Out. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.